Hi, this is Marcy Venezia of GleeWorks Holistic Coaching, and this is Thomas Brookbar, the growth coach of Metro West. Yes, and we are going to do a topic today in our in our podcast or our recording called Finding Your Why. So let's start out with uh, uh, Thomas, tell, tell everyone a little bit about you and what you do. I'm a business coach. And that can mean many things. The way I try to phrase it is I help people to make better decisions about their business, therefore get better results and overall lead a better life. So I help people focusing on the important areas of their business. I am your external focus, your external point of view that helps you to get through the difficult phases when you have nobody else to talk to. Mm -hmm. So important, you know, I meet uh, business owners all the time and they think they know it all. They're, I mean, they're leaders. They're uh, people who um, want to, you know, strike out on their own. And yet a business coach is, is really valuable. I'm also a business coach, but I'm also a personal coach. I use a holistic approach. So what I um, found is that the mindset or the, 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 uh, what people believe has a profound impact on their bodies and the decisions that they make and what they perceive around them. And so I also do business coaching. So I'll help small businesses, but I also help people who are suffering with depression, anxiety, um, you know, just needing a perspective on life. Um, I, I have a number of degrees and I'm also a parent of four kids and so I have a lot of experience all the way around <laughs> having having to have to guide kids through life definitely helps in this experience <laughs> I know I used to help uh, parents who had been out of the workforce for eight nine years to get their resume in place and they said I haven't worked for eight or nine years and I said what do you call <laughs> caring for children. And when we started to break it down into the activities that they learned and the skills that they learned raising parents, they were pleasantly surprised. So that's just a digression. So let's start with um, what is your why? And what does that mean? You know, so give us some ideas, Thomas, about that. Well, uh, to be honest, the, the why, the why question, is sometimes a little bit difficult to answer. You know, I personally struggled a lot over the last year or two, one and a half years. The pandemic, the uh, bad news everywhere, and the polarization of our political system really hasn't helped, right? It puts the whole world in like, what is going on? And it sometimes makes it difficult to focus on, on your daily tasks, to even, to be honest, even sometimes to get out of bed in the morning. Right? It it's, can be challenging. And I noticed around me, lots of people are challenged by that and have to deal with this. So when, when I think about my why or what is a why, for me personally, I, I noticed that pretty early in my life, I, I like to see people succeed. I love when I can do a little bit and it can be the, the smallest thing that helps somebody else to do something different, to succeed, to be proud of it. So in that sense, what is the why? I consider that, it's, think about it, your personal North Pole. It is the thing that you use your compass with. You know, your compass is more your plan, your, your business plan in the business world, but you need something like the magnetic field or your North Star to guide you. That helps you to get up in the morning. It gives you a purpose of being. It, it imbues you with passion to do the things you like to do, even, even if it gets difficult at times. And I realize, you know, we're not the first people to talk about it. No. It, 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 this is an old concept. You can go all the way back to the ancient philosophers and, and various faith traditions, they all talk about the why. So mm. I know you studied this, uh, Marcy. Talk a little bit about what more contemporary. Right. So, I mean, I think, and I think one of the things is that the, the why, from my perspective, is your belief. What's important to you? What drives you? And, you know, you talked about wanting to help people. I, too, 
you know, a, a lot of times beliefs or your why comes from uh, experiences in the past. And for me, it was always wanting to make help other people. And I think, so my job is to find a situation where I can help others succeed. So yes, why is, it can be a big thing actually, and it can be a small thing. I know there are people that um, their why is that they want to win a race because they're doing it in honor of their mother mm -hmm. or someone who is really important in their lives that's passed away. So the why is not, you know, there's a, you were asking about contemporary people that talk about why. Well, Simon Sinek, he did a ton on uh, finding your why, and he's written a book on it too. Very interesting guy. Um, but, and, and also uh, Tony Robbins and Dean DeGrasio and um, um, Russell Brunson, they're all talking about your why, your passion, your what, what are you gonna take responsibility for? And what I really think is that your why is not one big thing. It's a series of things that can help you motivate and drive you towards a result that you envision. So if you wanted to play the drums, for instance, you'd have to have a why. Like, I want to um, be successful at drums. That's kind of like a why. That motivates you, motivates you during the very, very difficult times. Um, so um, Thomas, tell me what, what your thoughts are, or why it's important to find it. Find I, I love your example of the drums because, <laughs> you know, it, it leads directly there, you know, the, the famous German philosopher Nietzsche once said, he who has a why can endure any how. And that I think applies directly. If, if you want to play the drums or the piano, it's a lot of work. Or, or if you want to play tennis, the same with running a business, right? It's challenging. And figuring out your why, knowing your why, is basically the, the motivation that gives you the strength to endure all the challenges and fight yourself through it. It, it gives you clarity in your life, right? It's, it's the passion and focus for your goals. Mm -hmm. Interesting stories are, uh, there's a lot of science out there. It, it's, it's not just a philosophical aspect. It's not just something that sounds good in some talks or papers, but there has been a lot of research done too that people that are in line with their why they also lead longer and more healthier lives. Mm -hmm. So there is a direct impact on the body as well. And the Japanese concept of Ikigai, and that would be a whole different podcast in general, right? It ties all these things together. So it helps you to, to align your goals, your life, to uh, develop the resilience that you need if you get shocks and impacts from the outside when things don't go well. And I think also in the business world that people often often neglect is once you've figured out your why, once you really know why you want to do things, it also helps you to live a life and also run a business of integrity. Mm -hmm. Because your, yeah. your motivations and your actions are aligned. And one last thing is if you know your why and you can communicate it to other people it also helps them because they know how to read you and what what how to deal with you and how to interact with you and they understand your motivation yeah. behind certain actions so the question yeah. now is we talk about the why well now so I, I wanted to just add to that so so Simon Senek has a story about Apple and he's, he's developed this concept called the golden, golden circle. And essentially what he says is that most businesses start with what are they going to sell and how are they going to sell it? And either don't go to the next step of why or they do, but it's not the, the, it's not the seed from which they're developing their products. And he uses the example of Apple where they they their why was the foundation of their what and how and so even though apple is just a computer company or just a phone company their why is something that people can say ah i believe in that i agree with that and then they they latch on to the company because of the why 
And that's really significant. Theirs is to make life easier for people. I'm actually, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but that's why this is important. It, the why will help you take all of the steps in for the what, the how, when, and where kinds of questions. Um, so yes, I think it's really important. And, and actually, Simon has a couple of ways that he suggests that you find your why, actually. There's the seven times why. That's not, I think that's Tony Robbins. And basically, what you do is you ask a person, um, why are you in, what's your business? And then, you, well, let's do it. What's your business, um, Thomas? I am a business coach. Okay, why is that important? That's number because one. People need help. Okay, why is it important to help people? Because they get more successful. Ah, and why is it important for them to be more successful? Well, they, they have a better life. Okay, and why is it important for them to have a better life? It makes them happy, and then I feel some, some success in that as well. Okay, and why is it important for them to be happy and for you to feel success? Because that's, that's what I want to do. This is like, <laughs> I, I mean, this is just, it makes me happy. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it, at the end of the day, it, it's better than the number in my bank account. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, the, and so we, we, we only, we didn't go as far as seven, but what ends up happening usually is that we get to a very personal reason why that's important you know maybe for you we were talking before about you coming you being an immigrant and and the struggles that you had and you wanting to make life better so that others don't struggle the way you did so that's often a reason that people have these whys um, the other method of finding your your why is to ask a friend who knows you very well but's not a parent or not a a, a relative you know what is it about me that makes, makes us a friend? What, what's distinct about our friendship that you don't have? And what happens is the finding the why is often an intellectual, it's in the cerebral cortex here, but it's not until you get to the emotional reason that you have that power. And so in our culture, we are generally disconnected from our emotional palate or our spiritual calling or a na natural or spiritual, spiritual nature. And so asking a friend about what is it that makes you particularly different and um, is, is often another good way because other people know why you, what, what makes you special. And that's not something that we can often find out for ourselves. There's one more thing I'd like to add to that too, is just think back about periods in your life where you were happy. You know, what was that preceded those moments that you think back and you mm -hmm. really feel that I was, I was in a good place at that time, right? I was happy. So that also can give you some idea what your why is. Because most likely what happened before that, what you did before that, you know, could relate to future success, future happiness. And I, I would definitely also take that into account as well. Just yeah, think I back, yeah. you know, when, when were you in a happy space? What does it take? And that's well, some idea. And I have a client who one of the things that we've done as a way of driving him out of um, a very dark place and wanting to build, build his business is what things gave you joy when you were a kid? And he identified three things that he did. And all of them were about helping somebody with disabilities be successful. Mm -hmm. And so that we've gone back to that over and over again, because that is a guide. That's as you were talking about. It's a way, it's, a, it's the beacon. It's the North Star for him as he goes through his journey of figuring out what he's going to do. Totally, totally important. Um, so how do we refresh it or what do we, in good times, how do we, what do we do with our why during the good times and make sure that it has the, the sticking power. So when we get into the tough times, it's there still. Right. And, and that, that's an interesting question because when we're in a good time, um, usually we don't think about that too much, right? Because everything seems to flow. We're in our way. So 
I would almost say when you're in a good time, you're aligned with your why. However, you know, it's still, I think it's worth it. And then you may really have to think about that and schedule it. Take some time off, right? Figure out why you are in a good spot. Again, walk down the memory lane, refresh your feelings, think about your feelings. And absolutely important, enjoy and celebrate your good times, mm -hmm. right? Because during those areas, you can build even more memories that then later serve to refresh the good memories. And when I say memories, I don't just mean like, oh, I was sitting on a nice lake and saw the sunset, right? I'm also talking about business here. Mm -hmm. There were periods in the business that were successful. This is also good memory, right? There were action we did as a company, as a group with the employees that helped us succeed. And that gives you a lot of I would almost say like an emotional bank account that you can build up during those times Yes. that yeah. you can later draw on, right? You, yes. you build your bank account, you store these good memories, you have to make a conscious effort. Don't let them just pass, right? Celebrate the successes. And that's not a new concept, you know, Blanchard, honking with the geese and so forth you know, gung-ho, these concepts, they're not new, but consciously using them, a lot of people forget that. When it, things are good, they just coast. And that's fine, you can do that. But if you're conscious about that, you build these memories and refresh. And also, while things are good, I think it's also, also advantageous to make a conscious effort to avoid the bad habits, the bad thinking, the mind traps, right? Yeah, I, Stay, I know. I talk a, about that as well. Yeah, I talk a lot about the living in the gift. And there's a lot of positive in what's going on. And people, you're right, people often forget to notice and put emphasis on the positive, only looking at what might not be going well. Um, and, and, and so, you know, and when we look at the difficult times, that why is that that why is for the difficult times It's to give you the emotional passion to push through if you or, or to be pulled through by your vision. And so, you know, if you're trying to push through it and it's a you're trying to discipline yourself to reach a goal, that's much, much harder than it is if you're being pulled by your passion for it. And I think that's you know, when you're talking about the good times, you want to be thinking about what you're passionate about during those times, so that when things aren't going so well, you're still willing to push through. Um, so it, it's hard to, to go through the difficult times, but that's why you identify your why, so that you have some tools and you have some reserve in order to make it through some of those tough right. times. It's the old saying, right? During the good times, you build the your your rainy times account, right? You you put money aside. I mean, it's it applies to personal life as well as business life. Mm -hmm. During the good times in a business, if you're smart about it, everything goes well. You build your skills, you build reserves mm -hmm. because you know eventually it will get difficult. And during those times, you draw on your reserves. And the mm -hmm. same, I think you should do also with your emotional stability. You know, I mean. If you run through tough times, like pandemics, right? You remember you had good times, mm -hmm. you have good friends and these friends are still there, draw on them. Yeah. That gives you a lot of emotional stability. Now, one question I have for you is, if it gets too bad, do you change your why? You know, I think it, often when it's too bad, there's an emotional component to that. And it's really, I use the example of a, of a swamp when things are really bad and it, it's like the mud and everything is all swirling around and it feels really bad and you're, you're doubting everything. Well, that's the time to just relax and stay in it and wait. Wait until the water clears and you have a better sense. So it's not the time to change your why. You know, you don't go, if you're in the swamp and you want to get to that island there that's has your your picnic there you don't when the when everything starts to swirl you don't say hey where's the closest clump of of uh grass that i can jump on um and and that takes self it takes self-discipline it takes 
it takes having a team around you. And I think that's one of the things that we both offer our clients is that perspective. You know, a lot of times you might, you as a client might be in the swamp, but we're still standing on the side saying, hey, hey, stay in the swamp just a little bit longer. You can do it. You know, we're, we're your, you know, your pep talk. We'll give you the pep talks. We have the knowledge and the skills and the experience. I mean, we've been through a lot of these. I know as a serial entrepreneur, I had a couple, some of them had disasters in terms of having to sell them off at, at losses and things like that. And some of those were my fault in not having a, a growth coach or somebody to kind of guide me. But some of those were just environmental and it didn't make sense to jump ship just because I thought I was failing. So I think I think that's really important. Is so great question, Thomas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one, once you figure out your why, you, your core reason for being, right? Mm -hmm. That that typically stays with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed before, you know, a good point to find it. Really think back about the moments where you had success and where you were happy. You know, that that should be a pretty good guide. Uh, one little segue into that. You know, the swamp. I love the swamp example, and, and <laughs> sometimes things go tough in life, but um, the, the visual picture I always have is you have a big dog with a lot of fur. They <laughs> jump into water, they jump into the mud, and they come out totally dirty, right? Yeah. They, they look like a mess, and then they do this shaking thing, <laughs> and the mud flings, and boom, you have the same dog that you had before. See, that, that's what you, you have to do, right? <laughs> sling of the mud, go back to your original self. And it's the same beautiful dog, even though it looked like a mess just a second. <laughs> no, you have to step away to not get hit by the mud, but yeah. So tell me um, that's the core of the dog. Yes. <laughs> so Thomas, what, what are a couple of takeaways we can give our listeners? I would say, you know, take some time and figure out your why if you haven't done that before. Really, really take some time some extra space, talk to somebody, discuss that with a good friend, acquaintance, or a coach. Yeah. What We're here for that. Mm -hmm. can take a very good friend, but take some effort because it's going to be your guiding principle that you can remind yourself. And then the other thing is during the good times, build the reserves. Consciously build the reserves. Don't let the good times just pass by. Mm -hmm. Build memories. Mm -hmm. during those times I guess yeah. you have a few more yes I think you know for me I would say um, don't go it alone you know we are always 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 stronger and better with other people around us and I think you know there are going to be difficult times I know I had a client then she I was hired to do a marketing plan and after a couple of questions they realized that they needed an exit plan and one of the most important things they said about my work with them as now an exit planner was that I normalized it. I helped them to understand that businesses go through um, you know, bankruptcy and fail and, and succeed all the time. And to have somebody that gives you perspective on that and keeps you on that, keeps you in the swamp long enough for you to see again your vision. That's truly, truly important. And, you know, many, many, many people do not use business coaches that would have benefited from them. And so I, I, I really think don't go it alone. Even if you're not hiring one of us, get somebody that is better at business than you are <laughs> to help you out during those tough times. Absolutely. I always use the Feynman quote. Feynman was a famous physicist, and he said, the easiest person to fool is yourself. Oh, God, in certain awesome. situations, wishful thinking is just not helpful. <laughs> Having an external a mirror, a reflection board, really can help because we tell ourselves stories. Yes. We tell ourselves stories every single day, yes. and we have to get past our own stories. We have to, you know, face the reality and then make the right decisions, right. not based on our stories, but based on what's really going on. Yeah. Well, this was lots of fun, Thomas. And um, I, I hope our listeners heard um, something that they were able to take away and 
And um, we're certainly available to have a conversation. Doesn't have to be a certainly jumping in full blast right at the beginning. Just give us a call. Um, my phone number is 781-223-8221, 781-223-8221. And Thomas here has put all of his contact information right up in the corner, which is really super. And I've just learned something from you, Thomas, about oh, my screen. Yeah. <laughs> Again, you know, if, if you if you use it, I don't mind it. Go yeah. ahead. So you see, you I won't have my two baby deer in the background like the, the next time. I'll I'll have a much more professional look. So, um, any last words, Thomas? No, I just want to repeat my phone number in case somebody listens only to that on audio. Oh, so great. it's five zero eight five zero four seven five four zero. Again, five zero eight five zero four seven five four zero. And if you happy or if you, if you happen to watch the video recording, it's all on the screen. Yep. And we're going to do this again, right, Masi? Yep. We're having a great time. And you know what? You know what I love is we're getting to know each other. We're getting we're trusting each other more. And, you know, I had a client and I called you during the week and you were Absolutely. you were so helpful and you offered to help. And I think that's that's what's going to really, truly make our partnership powerful, even though we're actually competitors. So I think we're, we're changing the, the narrative on competition and, and cooperation. I, my, my, most of my life, I worked in areas where some of my best friends were my competitors. Mm -hmm. And I always consider this as growing the pie, mm, yes. right? It, it's about let, let's work together. It's cooperation. Mm -hmm. has helped humanity through the last 200,000 years of evolution. It's <laughs> not <laughs> yeah. going to change. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, All everyone, right. for listening, and have an amazing day. Thank you, Marcy. Thank you.